All right, what's up? My name is Brett Robert from San Francisco Parkour, and welcome to the third annual San Francisco International Jam. Today's day three. We're out here at the bunkers in San Francisco, iconic location, but the weather is uh, a little less than ideal today. On Friday, there were jams all over Northern California, from Davis to San Jose to Marin County, East Bay. There was a whole bunch of satellite jams. It really gave us a chance to showcase what a diverse community we have and how many different awesome. spots we have to train in. Also, it was a lot of fun this year. We, we've had a lot of people come back for two or three years in a row now, and we had people come up from Temecula, we had people from San Diego. We had a big group from Arizona this year, which was really, really cool. We had a, a bunch of people from Mesa, Phoenix area, and um, yeah, just all over California. Even you know, from my home county, there were like five people here that I'd never met. So parkour is getting huge. People are finding out about it, getting together, training, and organizing, and it's great to be a part of it. I'm here with Albert Kong, he's a community organizer for SFPK, and he's designed some games here today for the International Jam. Albert, what are these games? Why do we do them? How do they help bring the community together? So what we did was we made a, uh, a Pathfinder game throughout campus, and uh, throughout campus there's going to be 11 routes hidden on buildings. If you have the map, there's regions uh, where you'll be able to find the routes. Each route is marked by a triangle number, like this one, and there's going to be 10 of them per route. So you, uh, so there's 11 routes, 10 markers, you run through them in order and record your best time. It's, uh, let's do parkour for routes rather than uh, rather than just for um, big single movements. Right, parkour is about routes. One of the things that's really fun in parkour, you know, I think a lot of people notice this when they start and they kind of lose this, is that like training with a small group is a lot uh, a lot of fun because you kind of, you all get to do um, a lot of stuff, you get a lot of runs in if you're doing paths or whatever. Um, when you get to big jams, like when we started doing monthly jams and we get like international jams and things like that, um, we get like 150 people. I mean, we get a big jam here, um, and even like even when you get up to like 20 or 30, like it's hard for uh, for um, people to get a lot of time in um, in the locations. It's hard for people to start moving around and exploring the environment. Uh, people kind of get stuck in places and they kind of get stuck in big groups. Where, um, where people who might be a little more intimidated by the really advanced guys get a, just kind of stand around and watch, um, watch everyone else do something like that's that's kind of ridiculous. Um, I wanted to kind of work on that problem by, uh, by through design. So games like these are actually helping beginners get more involved. Is that what you're saying? That's the goal. I hope it, I hope it works. I want to um, I want to create a space where beginners have a little bit of direction but something that really does feel guided toward actual parkour. Um, the courses that I've made aren't, uh, aren't limited by like where you can go or how you have to go over anything. There's no place where it says you have to do this gigantic cat, cat leap or whatever. Yeah. Um, you can kind of step anywhere. So if you're having trouble, you can always go around. You can find the route that works fastest for you. And that's yeah. kind of like the, the, uh, the uh, force of the thing. Um, Whereas if you're if you have a, a certain like level of skill, if you have like a certain thing that allows you to see like you know this big movement that'll get you somewhere faster, you can you can take that. So it's I, and I that's kind of for a lot of different. And that's the goal of parkour, right? Is to so, adapt yeah. to your body, adapt to your environment, stay within your level, but have fun while doing it. Yeah, and also and, and to be able to see what's possible, and then figure out how you can get there, right? Like you don't have to you don't you don't want to narrow your view. Yeah. You want to expand 
but you want to be able to see everything and then work on it, work on your abilities. Your, you know, your I think it's great to too that people get to take a chance to step back and watch how everyone else approaches the problem. You get a chance yeah. to see, see, all right, this is how a beginner is going to run this course. Yeah. This is how they're adapting to it. But then when we see someone talented like you run through who maybe thinks about it a little more, puts a little more thought into their movement, you can really blaze through these courses yeah. and kind of inspire people to think, all right, maybe if I push myself a little more, right. that's what I can get to. Well, the thing is, like, like, I think parkour is like partially about pushing yourself, right? Partially about like that discipline, that hard work. But I think a lot of it is about cleverness too. Yeah. Right? We're trying to do things that are like different and like unique and, and they work because we thought about them and we trained for them. Yeah. Like guys like Tom and Thomas uh, from the peninsula, they're like looking for all the loopholes that you can do to like kind of match the goal and, and I wanted that to happen. You know, I wanted people to be able to be clever and use that like use the the, uh, the fact that they think about it um, and they think about the way they move to uh, to get through. Um, oh you figured you guessed it? Yeah so uh, Tom is the first uh, first guy who uh, finished the passcode and in order to find the passcode you have to finish like find all the routes and find like the secret letters at the end of each one. And then when you put them all together you can make a you can make a password that uh, wins you like a, like the first three people are gonna get a t-shirt. Um, so Tom like got four of them and then figured out the password. <laughs> Albert's, Albert's so. too obvious. He's too. Uh, he, he's hey, I thought it was gonna be hard. Like yeah, training, I thought it would be kind of hard. We train know? in the same kind of community, so yeah. it's, it's a very. Uh... Oh, the prize is a uh, SF uh, International Jam 2013 T-shirt. And we are, we are the, the PKLA group. We're a group that's been going on for, for quite a few years, and uh, we're, we're more like a family. I have a school bus, as you can probably tell, and uh, I, I use it for, uh, for parkour tours. And we basically load it up in, in Orange County, then Los Angeles, on uh, Friday early morning, and we drove up here. It's a pretty epic drive. We had uh, we broke down about halfway. We threw we threw the uh, the serpentine belt on the motor that does the water pump and all the different goodies. I bought this bus almost three and a half years ago, and I wanted to build the ultimate school bus. I wanted to build a bus that was not only for not only educational but fun and ridiculous. The back opens up; it actually loads loads my race car inside. We could fit 30 people on the roof if we want. People sleep on the roof rack. It's it, it's fully functional. So the problem was is we got this bus and we didn't really know what do we name a bus like this. So on the way to Burning Man uh, two years ago, we had we had all the parkour. We had a bunch of a uh, bunch of my friends parkour athletes with us, and we were going up to film a documentary called People in Motion. And on the way there, we developed a leak in the radiator. We had no way to fix it. We're on the we're middle of nowhere. And so I said, well, I'm, I'm just gonna go get a bunch of, bunch of pepper, a bunch of finely ground pepper and put it in the radiator because I, I know that stops leaks. The pepper floats, doesn't dissolve, clogs the hole, you're good. All of a sudden, the leak, the radiator burst open through that hole again and it steamed up all this peppered water. And I, I just kind of like, I just kind of laughed to myself and I said, oh, Pepper. <laughs> and I was like, that's, that's her name, Pepper. <laughs>
out early, uh, but there's going to be barbecue coming up. Uh, shirts, I don't know where they are, they're going to be coming, so I'll be in charge of that. Um, so these guys win some shirts, um, and everyone else gets to pay for them. What? Oh, the phrase was "Ed Van Do A." To be in the last effect. San Francisco International Jam has been a blast. 2014 is going to be even bigger and even better. So far in three years of doing this, we've had people come from Mexico, Canada, India, Germany. Next year, I hope you can make it. Thanks.